WSSB, Girl TV. Hi, I'm Zandy. Welcome to WSSB, Girl TV, where we're strong, smart, and bold. This week's show has a lot of stories related to our hometown, Sarasota, Florida. Fiona shares about National Circus Day. Amaya interviews Lindy Smith, the CEO of Aladdin Equipment. We share part two of my interview with Flory Roberts. Savon and Fiona share their trip to Moat Marine's research station in the Keys. And finally, Star tells us about one of her inspirations, Bendy the Jungle Girl. Enjoy the show. My name is Star, and today I'm going to talk about someone who may sound familiar, Bindi Sue Irwin, who is better known as Bindi the Jungle Girl. Bindi the Jungle Girl is an Australian children's nature show. Bindi's first TV episode was on June 9, 2007 on Discovery Kids when she was seven, and her final episode was in 2009. One of her episodes was about Asian elephants that have been the workhorses of Asia for centuries and the role they play today. Benny was born in Queensland, Australia on the 24th of July, 1998, to her parents Steve and Terry Irwin. You might recall her father Steve from the show The Crocodile Hunter, who died from being stung by a stingray. Benny is now 14. Benny, in my opinion, is brave because she handles everything from tarantulas to crocodiles to anacondas. Her favorite color is pink and her favorite animals are crocodiles and snakes, but she loves koalas, possums, and lizards. Benny is learning how to play piano and ride a surfboard. Rudy loves singing and dancing about wildlife. Benny inspires me to be strong by helping others, smart by knowing how to handle very dangerous animals, and bold by performing in front of other people. I'm Star from Girl TV. Bye! Welcome to the greatest show on earth, WSSB Girl TV. Hi, my name is Fiona, and I'm here to tell you about National Circus Day, May 19th, 2013. Also, I will help you find out ways to celebrate Circus Day here in Florida. Here are some cool facts about how the circus started. The first circuses were held in ancient Rome, and they took place in a big arena called the Circus Maximus. The circus originated from the caravan festivals, which were held in England in the early 18th century. Groups of jugglers and Groups of jugglers and acrobats traveled from t one town to the next in wagons, which they used as dressing rooms. They did their performances on the community green and at fairs and markets. No entrance was charged, but after every presentation, the manager g gave out a hat to gather whatever amount of money he would get. What are some of the places in Sarasota that celebrate the circus? Well, one of them is the Ringling Circus Museum. The Ringling Circus Museum celebrates the American circus, its history, and unique relationship to Sarasota. Established in 1948, the museum was the first in the country to document the rich history of the circus. For view colossal parade and baggage wagons, sequined costumes, and a sideshow banner line that documents the circus of the past and of today. See memorabilia and artifacts documenting the history of the Ringling family circus. John Ringling as the Circus King, and the greatest, the greatest circus movie, The Greatest Show on Earth, which was filmed in Sarasota. Also an exhibition in the Circus Museum is the Wisconsin, the private rail car of John and Mabel Ringling built in 1905. Built during the golden age of rail, the Wisconsin car provides a unique view into the splendid travel accommodations that John and Mabel Ringling enjoyed on their travels around the country on business and with the circus. Enter the Circus Museum's Tibbles Learning Center and see an, ex an exhibition of circus posters. Ranging in size from window to barn size, these colorful posters were plastered on buildings, walls, and fences all across America and broadcasted in no uncertain terms that the circus was coming to town. The cornerstone of the circus of the Circus Museum's Tibbles Learning Center is the world, world's largest miniature circus, the Howard Brothers Circus Model. The model is a replica of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus from 1919 through 1938. It was created over a period of more than 50 years by master model building and philanthropist Howard Tibbles. 
The second floor of the Tibbles building documents the history of the American circus from ancient times to the present. One famous lady in the circus is a lady named Dolly. Dolly Jacobs was born right here in Sarasota, Florida in 1957. She is the daughter of famed circus con Lou Jacobs and former New York fashion model turned circus performer Jean Rockwell Jacobs. She began her circus career in 1975 and has been working ever since. She was a featured performer with Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus. She and her husband, fellow circus performer Pedro Ries, founded Circus Sarasota in 1997. In 2012, she received the Florida Folk Heritage Award. If you haven't seen her, you should. She performs at Circus Sarasota and is an amazing aerialist. Circus Sarasota is more than a circus. Their home base is here in Sarasota. Circus performers from all over the world come here to perform and learn from each other. Those performances are open to the public. They also visit schools to teach kids about the circus. Maybe they will come to yours. Another circus in Sarasota is the Sailor Circus. Circus Sarasota took over the Sailor Circus in 2012. They teach fourth through 12th grade students how to perform in the circus. In addition to Dolly, Nick Wallenda is another famous circus performer who grew up in Sarasota. On June 15, 2012, high wire artist Nick Wallenda joined the ranks of legendary daredevils. He became the first person ever to walk across the Roaring Niagara Falls on a two-inch wide steel wire. The historic event was broadcasted live by ABC to an audience reaching 13.3 million Americans. Rating for a non-sports broadcast of rating for a non-sports broadcast of any network in six years. Nick Wallenda crossed at Horseshoe Falls, 200 feet up and 1,550 feet across where the raging waters rushed downward at more than 600,000 gallons per second. After battling wind swells and dangerously thick mist, Wallenda completed his walk in just 25 minutes, during which viewers could hear his repetition of prayers. In one truly electrifying moment, as he approached the Canadian side on the wire, he paused, and then bowed to the crowd on bended knee, raising a victory fist. Then over 120,000 fans who had waited for him in the rain cheered. Wallenda then sprinted to safe ground and after embra embracing his wife and family, he said that he did this to inspire people around the world to follow their dreams and never give up. This summer, Wallenda plans to walk across the Grand Canyon on a wire. You can watch him practice in Benderson Park. Wow, can't wait to watch that. For Girl TV, I'm Fiona. See you at the circus. I'm Rachel. Welcome to Girls Inc., a place where girls learn to be strong, smart, and bold. Strong means when my muscles are big. Daily sports and activities at Girls Inc. help girls to be strong in mind and body. Hi, yeah. You're smart about choices. You don't always go along with the crowd. You pay attention in class and get good grades. Girls Inc. makes learning about science, math, art, and technology fun. Programs like Project Bold help girls become strong leaders, build self-confidence, and teaches girls to be themselves. I am Girls Inc. I am Girls Inc. I am Girls Inc. And I'm Siobhan. And we're here to tell you about our Key West trip during spring break with Moat Marine. It was awesome and educational, and we have Moat Marine to thank. Let's share the highlights with our viewers. On the first day when we finally arrived at Marathon Key, we went to the Dolphin Research Center. At the center, we, ha we had a tour and got to meet a lot, a lot of dolphins. The dolphins were in the sea, but they had an underwater gate to make sure they did not leave the center. One thing we did was give the dolphins ice and put an underwater microphone into the water to hear the dolphins use echolocation. At the center, we saw many wild iguanas too. On the second day, we rode in the bus to a beach where we practiced snorkeling since this was the first time a lot of us had been snorkeling. When we were snorkeling, the view was beautiful. The coral was colorful and many fish were swimming around us. 
Then we went to another part of the beach and lay on our towels in the sun. After that, we left the beach and got on a boat. First, we went through a canal that opened up to the Gulf of Mexico. We stopped for a few minutes and learned about the history of the keys and how they got their name. Some keys are made out of mangrove trees and some were just random pieces of land. The boat sailed underneath the Flagler Centennial Railroad. We headed over to the coral reef where we would snorkel. Then we headed over to an island and while we were on the island, the people who were driving the boat made fish and hot dogs. It was yummy. The hot dogs were crispy and scrumptious. Then we headed back to the dorms. The dorms were really cool. When we got back, we made our own coral polyps. We used marshmallows for the polyp and used Twizzlers for the body of the coral. We sprinkled green sprinkles for the algae. On our third day after a good practice, we headed to Crane Point Nature Museum and they had a place where you could dress up like a pirate. We dressed up and did the Harlem Shake video. After that, we headed to the Turtle Hospital to learn about a disease called Bulwa. It is when a chemical gets on the shell of the turtle and makes big bumps like barnacles. Everyone was upset when we had to leave, but the trip was really fun. Thank, Thank you, Moat Marine, for letting us do this. From Girl TV, I'm Fiona. And I'm Siobhan. Bye. Bye. and I'm here with Lindy Smith, the CEO of Aladdin Equipment. What are your responsibilities as a CEO? Well, I oversee all of the different supervisors in the company um, and make sure on a daily basis that we're getting the bills paid and people are showing up for work and we're getting the product out the door. Is your job hard? Some days. Some days it can be very hard, especially if you've got people out sick or we have a show schedule during uh, certain months of the year and when we have five or six people out of the office it does become hard we have to try to fill in for those people. How long have you worked here? Uh, basically all my life. I took a couple years off after college to teach school but being a family business I've worked in it all my life. What other jobs did you have other than Aladdin? Uh, taught school for two years um, and just did what most teenagers do when they're going to school, worked in McDonald's and I actually grew up in a town close to where the first McDonald's was built in California. Do you need training or education for your job? Absolutely. I know how to run all the machines in our shop. I drive a forklift, I can weld, and I can set up all the machines and run them. And you have to be able to do that so that you can train people. What does your company make? We make replacement parts for swimming pools and spas. We make the baskets that go in the skimmers and the pumps. Uh, we make the uh, O-rings that uh, go on a filter to keep it, or a motor to keep it from leaking. We make cartridges that go into um, filters, and then specialty products for just cleaning the pools. Where did the name Aladdin, Aladdin Equipment come from? Actually, my dad came up with that. Um, he wanted a word that would be a, an A, so it came at the beginning of the Yellow Pages because we started off being in the service business. Um, we only cleaned pools and delivered chemicals and had retail stores. Um, and he wanted something that he could use connotations from the word. So Aladdin, we figured it was a genie, a gen, um, all of my magic lamps and my, my, my genies back here. Um, and um, so that's how he came up with the name Aladdin. How many people work for you here? Uh, right now we have 50 people. Well, where do you sell your products? Um, actually, we sell all over the world. We uh, sell in the United States, but we sell to a lot of foreign countries. What is it like to have your husband work for you? Um, actually, it's very nice. We. Um, uh, we didn't work with each other until we moved here from California and I wanted to try to get into uh, like uh, Home Depot and those places and he had done that at his other job when he worked for Goodyear so he said yes he would come and work for me so it's it's good we have a partner's desk he does the sales I make the product what advice would you give to girls like me who want to be a CEO um, make sure you finish your schooling uh, take lots of business classes, that's good. Whenever you can during the summer, 
try to find companies that will, as you get older, that will let you come in and train. They'll teach you. We do it here. We put up uh, brochures at high schools and that to look for summer work, for summer help. Um, I think that's the best thing that you can do. I know our children all worked in the, the business, too, in the summers. Thank you, Ms. Smith, for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you. For Go TV, I'm Amaya. Bye! Girls Incorporated of Sarasota County is a nonprofit youth program for girls age 5 to 14. Through a variety of different programs, Girls Inc. helps young girls become strong, smart, and bold. One way it does this is with Dream Harbor, a miniature society run completely by the girls. It has a government of elected officials, its own money and bank, shops, and even a television production studio. The mayor of Dream Harbor is 10-year-old Trinity. Let's meet her now for a tour of Dream Harbor. Hello, I'm Trinity, and I'm the mayor of Dream Harbor. The different jobs at Dream Harbor are the government center, the bank, and post office. This is where all the girls get their money their money for a consumer break. Yeah. Mini Chef's Cafe. The cafe, they give a snack here. Today we just had turkey salad, fresh apples, and a cookie. The Science Museum is they make gap, goo, and lava lamps, and lots of other fun stuff. The gym, which is Fitness Fanatics. Shabby Chic Boutique. Color My World. WSSB Girl TV. Um, right now we are in our production room and right now we are currently working on the show, the movies, and they're all writing scripts right now. From all of us at Girls Inc., thanks for coming on our tour. Hi, I'm Zandy. I'm here to introduce Ms. Flory Roberts. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, I'm a pleasure to be here, Zandy. What exactly do you do and is it complicated? Well, what I do now is not complicated because we have an online business. Smart Cover is not sold in stores. It's sold online and it is definitely something that uh, was a big change for me. And it was a little complicated learning, but I love it. And I feel that we, another thing you have to be used to in business, and I think even as girls growing up, you have to be ready to change because everything around you changes, including the guys. So, you know, you have to be able to live in the world the way it is. And I think at Girls Inc., they do so much to help you do that. Am I right? Yes. It's exciting. How long do you work in a day? Well, I'm sort of, I stay up very late. So my hours are not typical, nor am I at, you know, a, a, a typical job. I'm in a time of life where I work where I want to work. Yeah. And so I, from show business days, I am always late to go to bed. <laughs> and but I don't get up so late either. It's just uh, you know, I I think that women who are involved in a career, and particularly in a career, and if you have kids and if you have other responsibilities, it is a lot more complicated. And you know, there's so much talk now about what, you know, about uh, anyway. How, do, how long do I plan to work? <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> until I feel I can't anymore. But I'm not going to take a paying job. I'm just going to spread my knowledge around as long as I can. You agree with that, Zandy? Yes. <laughs> what is the best training to get from your career? Oh, for my career? Yes. Well, if you wanted to go into cosmetics, then you have to kind of pay your dues. You can be a cosmetic demonstrator. You can understand how the business works. And it is, you know, very sales and marketing oriented. It's definitely important to understand marketing. If you're going to go into consumer products of any kind, 
marketing is a must because you have to be able to tell your story to the public because that's how they're going to buy. So I would say that would be an important thing if you are more, and there's so many opportunities now in technology, engineering, science, and I think do not, do not say it's a guy thing, it is not. What's your, what's your particular field, Sandy? What do you like? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I know you say you dance. Yeah. And my granddaughter did that too, you know. But I, I just want to leave the message, do not feel that you're limited to, you know, English or teaching or they're wonderful. I mean, it's not that I'm saying they're not great careers. The teaching and sharing the knowledge with young people, is, you know, is important. It's just that don't feel that there are any fields you can't go into because they're too complicated or math-oriented. You know, some of the most important and most excellent math teachers I have found in schools now are women. We bring our own particular understanding of how people need to learn to these, well, I wouldn't say more complicated, but different subjects, but they're very important. So go for where their jobs are and go for what you love. What was your first job? What was my first job? My first job was in a Broadway show. I replaced Carol Channing, and I know most <laughs> girls don't know who she is, which breaks my heart, but she was a very famous um, musical comedy performer. So that was my first job in show business, in theater. It was great. Loved it. I thought it would go on all for my whole life, but it didn't. Because hard to get a job. And it's hard, you know, it's very limiting, which is why I went into advertising and promotion because it was kind of something that my training had prepared me for. And then found I wanted to be in business. But, um, so my very first job was in the theater and it was, it was rewarding. I became a member of ec equity and what have you, but that's not where I stayed. So you don't have to stay at the first job. Get it for what you'll learn. And then you can move on if it isn't right for you. Yeah, that's it, don't get stuck in a dead-end situation. If it's not right, move on. Who is your role model? Who is my role model? It's a hard <laughs> question. Because when I started, there were not that many women in business. So, you know, I looked since I was in the cosmetic business, I looked at people who had done a great job. You always look at your, I mean, it's not exactly a role model, but I always looked at my competition. But my role model, there were not a lot of them way back. I laughed. My role model was Joan Crawford because I used to go to the movies on Saturday afternoon and stay all day to learn how to speak, you know, because I wanted to be an actress. So, and how to dress in all of the things that I might need later. But I, I didn't have one role model, and that's why I tried very hard to be a mentor to young women today, uh, because I think it is important to have a role model. I think it's important to be able to go to someone for advice. And I'm encouraging all of the business women that I know to become mentors, because is that something you'd like, Sandy, as you go? along your professional. Wouldn't you like to be able to ask someone, you know they'll give you an honest answer. So that's, that's mentoring is kind of becoming a mission for me and I'm trying to spread the word. Because yeah. guys have always, men have always had mentors and have used it to particularly um, advance in corporations and I think it's so important for women to have the same edge. What advice do you have for our girls watching now? Just, you know, again, find something that you're, find something you're good at. I think it's important. Find something you're good at and train to be even better. Now we can't ask, please hire me, I'm a woman or I'm a girl. Yeah. Who really, right? Yeah. You can't. But if you're 
good at what you do. You want to be accepted and given the promotions and everything that go with it. You know? Do you have any questions, Andy, you'd like to ask me? No. no. <laughs> you know, I mean, and of course there's always the questions of balancing career and, you know, I have two sons. And I say, you know, there's never going to be a time you don't feel some guilt. You do, because you won't be always able to be at everything your kids do. But you pick your priorities, right? Yes. And I would say, think big, Sandy. Whatever you dream of, just know it can even get bigger. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us today, Ms. Ms. Ford. For Girl TV, I'm Zandy. Bye. Girls Inc. is teaching girls not just about now and how to be a better person and how to be a better leader now. They teach about history and how women were treated before. It inspires all the girls to do stuff they never knew they could do. I've learned to be responsible and I've learned to do what I need to do and to get it done. Because it shows younger girls and older girls about the real world, the real world, how it's like. You know when you go to school and the teachers just teach you? When you come here, the teachers teach you, but they treat you as if you're family, as if they care about you. It's one of those places where you can feel like you can be yourself no matter what. You don't have to worry about being scared or anything. It's just a really big opportunity for me to be here, and I just love it. Just being able to laugh out loud and being like girls. <laughs>